Hello, this is Gio. Hey, I'm back in my pinball room, still working on my Bally Future Spa pinball game. And last time I was with you, I was kind of testing out some of these lamp driver boards. Uh, you can see all the other boards here. And I was kind of trying to get this one and that one working. Actually, we were focused on this one because this one had the most components out. And a lot of these SCRs were out. And I showed you how to test those, showed you how to test um, the decoder chips here, etc. And that worked well for this board. But now I'm kind of trying to work on the lesser, or the one with the lesser issues. This one didn't have as many lamps out. Um, but it doesn't seem, uh, I've, I've been testing this one and it doesn't seem to be an SCR issue. I have replaced a couple of those components, I think a couple down here. But it's still having some problems and I think I finally figured out what the issue was. So I went ahead and started a lamp test and hey if you don't know how to start these lamp tests go ahead and check out my other video. I'll, I'll hit a link at the end of this video uh, so you can see the work, the previous work we did on this lamp board. But uh, so I did start a lamp test and you can see there's several lights out. This is the U, the S, uh, there's the 2000 there, I think there's a 2X here and a U up here. Now previously there were other lights out and sometimes when I plug this thing back in some lights work and some lights don't and then it kind of reverses itself later. So I started thinking maybe it's not the uh, CSRs which I've already tested and I can't figure out uh, any more that are out. I also checked all the continuity of the traces on the back end of this thing and everything seems fine. And so I went ahead and reflowed the connectors of so here's here's the connector and it's connected with to pins and so I reflowed uh, the pins on the opposite side but it was still having some issues and so I thought that all the continuity issues were solved but then I would kind of wiggle this now this is something I should have started with in the first place but I was focused on the other board so I didn't really think through this so I started wiggling this and uh, kind of pulling it out slightly and in slightly. The, this basically, this connector is the, uh, the ones where all the troublesome lamps are connected to. That's why I'm kind of focused on this one. So I kind of wiggled it and sometimes lights popped on and sometimes lights popped off. So I knew it was associated with this connector. But uh, so I, I thought about this actual connector where the wires go in. There's, a, there's kind of a female end to this connector pins come out uh, of the board are the male side. And so I looked at all these connectors through here. I didn't change any because they all look nice and new and uh, in really good shape. Um, and so I didn't think it was that issue, but I knew it had to do with this plug somehow. Okay, so here's the board out of the game. Now I want you to focus on the connector. Let me put this light down right here. I'm going to uh, zoom in and show you what I'm looking at here. Let's get some light on the subject. Okay, so I think I zoomed in pretty well. Let's see if I can point here. If you look at this connector right here, you can see right here, look at that. It is pretty much the, um, the plating has worn all the way down. And so the plating's gone here also. Here you can see I actually put some uh, solder here trying to improve this one uh, and it helped a little bit but um, it's still having some issues. But you can see that these pins have lost their plating and this is the side where the other connector uh, pin is in contact. So it's constantly rubbing here. So these, these male pins are all degraded. So is this surprising to me? No, not at all. Actually, again, if, if you've ever worked on these boards, probably about 85 to 95% of the time you have an issue. It has to do with the connectors, some kind of trace, something is off, you know, not connecting properly, and usually it's some kind of connector. So even if you don't think it's a connector, it probably is a connector. If, even if you've proven it's not a connector, at the end of the day, it's still probably a connector. So always never, always focus on these connectors and really think deeply. In this case, I was kind of focused on the back of the board, looking at these traces and where they're connected here, because a lot of these a lot of times these solder joints here degrade 
and that's usually where the issue is. But quite often you also get degradation of the pins themselves as you see here and it's just not um, contacting the other side, the, the female end of the pin. So today we're going to be replacing these pins. Now we will have to desolder these pins out, uh, but first you probably need to order some new pins. And here is are the ones I ordered. And these ones actually came from Walmart. And I got this entire pack for, I forget, maybe about six bucks or so delivered. And um, so these, these are basically a perfect match. And what you see here, they're kind of notched here, so you can actually just snip them out to the size you want. You can see that these are longer than I want, but you can cut them to size. Now when you order them for this board, uh, pinballs come in different sizes for these pins, but for this particular board you're looking for uh, a 2.54 millimeter distance between these pins. Uh, you also want to look for the length. Now. Uh, I made a little error initially. I got these nice color-coded ones here um, originally, but these the lengths of the pins, let me take one of these things out. You can tell is slightly shorter. Now that may work, but I want to kind of match what, the existing lengths just to make sure that the connectors work. Uh, these ones, unfortunately, let's see, I, I wrote it down here. Uh, they are 11 millimeters in length. The ones that are actually compatible with the board are 14 millimeters in length. So when you're ordering, uh, just make sure you get the proper length. So before we desolder these connectors, we want to make note of where each one of these connectors has, has a missing pin. You can see it's missing here. It's missing there. Um, let's see, it's missing there and it's missing there. Now that helps you orient the direction the pin is supposed or the connector is supposed to be plugged in. So if you plug it in the wrong way, it could just burn out your entire board if you're not careful. So they want you to orient it correctly. And so each one of the connectors you plug into this bank uh, all has a, should have a little plug in one of the holes in the connectors as you see here. And that allows you to know the orientation is supposed to be plugged because if you try to plug it in the wrong way one of these other pins will hit that little plug and not allow you to plug it in. It's only It'll only allow you to plug it in where that plug uh, is located where there's no pin. Now in this case uh, it's kind of convenient because the board actually has a K here for key. Uh, it basically shows you where the key is, but not all the boards have that. So before you desolder, you just want to make sure you know where that's supposed to be. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little uh, rosin uh, to these pins just to kind of help uh, the desoldering process. And for each one of these pins, I'm just going to add a little solder. That really does help the process of the desoldering. It's kind of hard to understand, but you know, adding solder before you desolder, but it just kind of adds a little bit of fresh solder and helps the wicking away of the solder that much better. Now, next, I'm just going to use some solder wick to uh, remove most of the solder here. You could also use just a little suction device. I don't know if you could see this here where you just, you know, it just sucks it in, but uh, I find. Uh, I find it for me it's better just using the wick. It's a little bit easier and cleaner. And you can see here the solder or most of the solder has been removed. Now what I'm just going to do is take my soldering iron and just kind of like lightly press on the tips of the pins not isolating one at a time but just kind of on one side and just kind of push them down a little bit until they're generally flush with the board not applying too much pressure going back and forth kind of heating them up push them down and then just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol Take 
wipe them off. Okay, so I first want to cut this to size. So they're about that, that big. There you go, and reverse this, and this should just fit in nicely, and I could feel them on the bottom. I find the key, which is right here, and I want to clip off that key, like that. So I think I'm going to add, add a little block on the bottom to hold them in place, like this. Just for good measure, I'm going to add some flux. And then go ahead and clean off your work. And then inspect your work with a magnifying glass, or in my case, a hand lens. Make sure all the solder looks good. Set your multimeter to continuity. Just check to make sure that uh, the adjacent pins aren't in continuity with each other. Just making sure your solder doesn't bridge. And these all look pretty darn clean. Flip to the back, and there's your new pins. Looks pretty nice. So I'll just have to do this three more times, and then we'll plug it into the board. Okay, so we got all our beautiful pins in. We got the keys all cut out. So let's just stick it in the uh, machine and see how it plays. So the connectors went in really nicely. We'll turn it on. Give it a second to boot up. And there you go. Look at that. The U, the S is back. The 2X is back. You got the 2000. Very nice. And then finally the U. So there you go. It seems to work. Just uh, changing out those connectors. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to have lots of pinball videos to come. Bye-bye.